Welcome to Shipwreck Sunday, where we investigate disasters at sea and the impact that they have on the world today. My name is Eleanor. Today, we will be discussing the grounding of the cruise ship MS World Discoverer, whose wreck sits rotting on the shore to this day. Before we dive in, I must inform you. This story does include details of a maritime disaster resulting in the loss of a vessel that may be disturbing to some audiences. Viewer discretion is advised. Please note before we begin that I am not a mariner or expert in the field of maritime history, but I have done my research and will present the information as I understand it and with accurate nautical terminology. In today's episode, I will be including the basics of nautical terminology in the description for anyone who needs it. Today there will be some terms in the German language in which I am not fluent, but I'll do my best to give accurate pronunciations. Just want to put another small word in here for you guys. Thank you so much for your outpouring of support and suggestions. It's overwhelming and we just love the community that has come together. We now have a huge list of your suggestions and we'll keep referencing it, so feel free to keep sending them in. Thank you all so much and let's get into the World Discoverer. The ship was laid down in yard number 2250 in the Schau und Wesser ship in Bremerhaven, Germany in 1973, being launched on December 8, 1973 and being completed in 1974. Originally during her construction, she was called Biwa Discoverer, being sold to BEWA Cruises out of Denmark, being acquired by them on October 19, 1975. In July of 1976, Biwa Discoverer was sold to Adventure Cruises Incorporated, and they renamed the vessel to what we know her to be now, World Discoverer. She also became a long-term charter to Society Expeditions. Society Expeditions was a company known for its high-end cruises, oftentimes to remote locations like the Antarctic Peninsula. Boasting its dangerous yet luxurious cruises, the company ran for 30 years before filing for Chapter 7 liquidation bankruptcy following its creditor's seizure of its only remaining cruise ship in 2004 in Nome, Alaska. However, the company's bankruptcy happened after MS World Discoverer's tragic accident, so we'll pace ourselves a bit here. Also in 1976, MS World Discoverer was registered in Singapore until 1980, where it would be registered in Monrovia, Liberia until 2000. In 1987, Society Expeditions came under new ownership, and so the name was changed to Society Expeditions Cruises. Their offices were located in Seattle in the United States and Bremen, Germany. The ship also came under new owners, being owned by Discoverer Rettery, who had ownership of another vessel we have covered, MV Explorer. In 1990, she would be registered in Monrovia, Liberia, under the name MS World Discoverer, being refurbished under this name in 1996. Her call sign was ELDU3, and her IMO number, or International Maritime Organization number, which is a unique hull identifier, was 7349053. Now let's get into her construction. When she was built as Biwa Discoverer in Bremerhaven, Germany, she was built to be 287 feet and 1 inch long and displaced 3,724 gross tons. She had a beam of 49 feet and 7 inches wide, a draft of 14 feet tall, a depth of 28.6 feet, and spanned seven decks. She was painted white and blue with a red hull. The words World Discoverer scrawled on her side near the bow. World Discoverer had a double hull construction for periodic voyages to the Antarctic regions riddled with ice flows, and this hull allowed passengers safe observation of the ice flow movement without needing to worry about minor ice impacts, being classified as a Swedish slash Finnish 1A ice class. The ship also carried a fleet of inflatable dinghies that allowed passengers to get even closer to the ice. The vessel had a maximum capacity of 137 passengers in 76 cabins, with an average crew size between 75 and 80. Her single propeller was powered by two Maschenbau Kiel GmbH or Mach diesel 8M45 2AK engines capable of propelling the ship to 16.5 knots and giving her a cruising range of 8,100 kilometers, which allowed her to traverse the Northwest Passage, which is the route between the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans through the Arctic Ocean. 
She also had an observation lounge, a medical center with an active physician aboard, a sun deck with a small swimming pool, a lecture hall, a library, and a small fitness center. As for her service history, the ship conducted cruises in the southern hemisphere during Austral summer. You might be asking, what is Austral summer? Well, that would be summertime in the southern hemisphere, which is the opposite of boreal summer or summertime in the northern hemisphere. The Austral summer season goes from November to February, and during this time, MS World Discoverer visited the Falkland Islands, Argentina, Chile, and Antarctica. From March to May and August to October, so for real spring and autumn, the ship made her rounds in the South Pacific Islands. Between June and August during boreal summer, the ship was in the Alaskan region and near the Russian border in the Bering Sea. She also went through the Northwest Passage, as we mentioned earlier. She was a busy ship, and it seemed like there was nowhere MS World Discoverer couldn't go. The ship's master was Oliver Cruz, and he'd previously been chief mate of World Discoverer. As well as the crew, Society Expeditions hired on a small team of experienced expedition leaders that were there to answer questions about the regions, ice flows, the ship's destinations, and ice movement. The small fleet of dinghies also allowed passengers to land on shorelines in order to observe the local wildlife of whatever region they were visiting, each day usually containing two to three shoreline expeditions, and these were led by marine biologists, historians, geologists, and naturalists. Cruises aboard MS World Discoverer were for the adventurous that wanted a taste of the wild side of life, and she served this crowd dutifully for more than 25 years. In April of 2000, MS World Discoverer was in the middle of her South Pacific Islands cruising season. Around 4 p.m. on April 30, 2000, MS World Discoverer was in the Solomon Islands sailing through the Sandfly Passage. The Sandfly Passage, also known as the Tanavula Passage, is a marine channel near Andala and Toga. And unfortunately at the time, there was some uncharted coral reefs and large rocks that were unknown to MS World Discoverer. She experienced some inclement weather, and due to this, and not knowing there was a large uncharted rock or reef, sources differ on exactly which it was, the ship would strike the uncharted object. Immediately, Captain Cruz sent out a distress signal that was received in Honera, which is the capital city in the Solomon Islands. A passenger ferry would be dispatched to the ship that had sustained critical damage, rescuing everyone aboard except for her captain and skeleton crew. Captain Cruz would guide the ship into nearby Roderick Bay after the ship listed to 20 degrees, grounding her to avoid her sinking completely underwater. Captain Cruz did an excellent job of following naval protocols, which is to save the passengers, save the crew, save the vessel, and protect the environment. Unfortunately, after an underwater survey of the ship, MS World Discoverer would be deemed a constructive total loss. Because of this, it was decided to abandon the ship, and she still rests on her side in Roderick Bay to this day, rusting and rotting away. The president of Society Expeditions, Michael Lomax, praised and congratulated the crew of MS World Discoverer for their professional behavior, heroic actions, and bravery. He was quoted as saying they acted in an, quote, exemplary manner during this incident, which I couldn't agree with more. They did exactly what every passenger would hope a captain and crew would do. They stayed calm, organized the evacuation, and made sure every passenger was safely off the vessel before themselves. Again, hats off to them. It's sadly not often in these stories that we see such extraordinarily professional behavior. Sadly for MS World Discoverer, if she hadn't grounded like she had, she would have gone in for her annual dry dock and maintenance on May 11th, 2000, where she would have had two additional suites added on the boat deck and a new fire protection system installed throughout the vessel. However, the ship still sits where she grounded 22 years ago in Roderick Bay off the Nangela Islands, sitting at a 46 degree list with her bow pointing out to the horizon. Her white and blue paint has become rusted, and sadly she hasn't been treated with much respect. An Australian salvage company, which was the closest to the Solomon Islands, found the ship had already been ransacked by other factions and locals, making her practically worthless monetarily. At the time, the Solomon Islands were undergoing a civil war, and thus put a target on this ship that could have usable resources. 
Many of the windows have been removed, either by the weather or salvaging, and tidal waves have only added to the damage this ship is experiencing. Ironically, this ship that used to give exotic tours has become a tourist attraction herself, with the locals of the island and other cruise lines that sail past the wreck of MS World Discoverer, and one of these ships is MV Princess 2. A salvage attempt was made in 2000, but was, quote, abandoned after shots were exchanged with the local tribe. Again, there was civil unrest at this time, so a salvage was definitely not a good idea in 2000. Earlier, I briefly touched on society expeditions and their money woes, and we are going to return to that. After the disaster, society expeditions purchased and refurbished an ice-class vessel, naming it World Discoverer to replace the ship that had been grounded. The new World Discoverer launched in 2002, resuming the same cruise schedule as her predecessor. But, as I informed you earlier, this ship would be repossessed, and the company would cease operations in 2004. After a few name changes, the New World Discoverer would be known as Silver Explorer. She's still an expedition cruise ship, being operated by Silver Sea Cruises as of autumn in 2007. With the World Discoverer still grounded, this is where her story ends. We hope this retelling can honor the truly amazing evacuation that was performed by Captain Cruz and the crew, and that we can continue to keep this beautiful ship's story alive. Thank you for tuning in to Shipwreck Sunday. If you liked this episode and are listening on YouTube, please give us a like, leave us a comment, and subscribe to our channel. If you liked this episode and are listening on Spotify, Samsung Podcasts, Amazon Music, or another podcast service, please subscribe for more content and leave us a 5-star review as it does help us reach more listeners like you. If you have any ships you'd like us to cover, please leave us a comment and you might hear your favorite ship here on the podcast. Check out our community tab for updates and to interact with us, and don't forget to check out our second channel, Speed Force Media. Tune in next Sunday for the story of SS El Faro, an American Roro cargo ship that was lost at sea with her entire crew in 2015. Have a great week, and we'll see you next time.